thwarted because the state house was locked. The state troopers were uh, directed to barricade the doors and not let anyone in. They had strict orders. You can let 700 people in. Now, has anyone ever been to the state house? You know how big that place is? 700 people in that huge complex. And you know, I thought that was wrong. So when I learned that, I went, we get to go over in tunnels and we have our own little passes so we could get in. My colleagues and I, we stayed there for six hours trying to get those doors open and they were finally open. We had to threaten a lawsuit to get a federal court to give us an injunction. At that point, the doors were open and more, most of the people were let in. But, their government and that should never happen again and I think uh, I think we're taking some important steps to make sure that that type of abuse of power never happens again I want to invite all of you to come to the state house whenever you want it's the people's house and those of you oh I see my old friend here from my old Air Force ROTC days wow this is great um, I, those of you who have not been to the State House, please come up and get a tour. You can call my office, we'll arrange a tour for you, or call your own rep's office. It's a, it's a real gem. Now, I want to make sure you know how our, um, our email works. Uh, it's, it's very simple. It's my, I represent the 28th Ohio House District, so I'm district28 at ohr.state.oh.us. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of letters, but as Representative Driehaus said, you can go to the House of Representatives website, you can search for representatives, find out how to reach us. I want to let everyone know that this, this meeting ends promptly at 7.15. So that's all the time we get for the room, so please be courteous, make sure your comments are, are uh, brief enough, yet enough to, for us to understand your, your point of view. We'll have questions in a couple minutes, and I'm going to turn it over to Council member uh, Wend <laughs> Wendell. Young. Wendell Young, sorry. Uh, I'm going to interrupt real quick. I, I, I was going to mention this and I forgot. Um, for those of you who live in uh, Representative Mallory or Representative Reese's district, they were unable to make it tonight. They are very supportive, or rather very much against, uh, Senate Bill 5. And so I just wanted to let you know that they send their regards. They were unable to make it, so I don't want you to feel left out of the conversation. They, yeah, Alicia's up in Columbus at a committee meeting. So with that, Wendell Young. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Cincinnati City Councilman Wendell Young, and I'm here because I, I want to do a couple of things. First of all, I want there to be absolutely no doubt that this member of council absolutely supports the work of these fine people you see here. No way. <laughs> no way do you want to see Senate Bill 5 become law. I absolutely believe. Thank you, thank you. I absolutely believe that this country is a far better place for workers because of unions. Mm -hmm. Unions did not happen by accident. Unions were born of necessity. And as necessary as they were when they were born, they're even more necessary now. Woo. And the right to have the fundamental to making certain that people who work for a living are not taken advantage of, that the conditions under which they work, that the wages they are paid amount to fair wages for fair work. In this country, that certainly is not too much to expect. Now, I don't work in Columbus. I'm a member of Cincinnati City Council. But the last I checked, Cincinnati is a part of the state of Ohio. So whatever they're doing in Columbus has a direct effect on those of us who live in Cincinnati. I'd like for you to know that along with Council Member Cecil Thomas, who may be here, but I'm not sure, but he and I are introducing a resolution into our city council I'd like to read to you. 
It reads as follows. Expressing City Council's opposition to Senate Bill 5 as proposed on February 28, 2011, which would limit the collective bargaining rights of public employees in Ohio. Whereas the right of public employees in Ohio to collectively bargain has long been established and respected and has allowed unions and public employers to avoid strikes and find common ground. And whereas Senate Bill 5 proposes to severely limit the collective bargaining rights of state and local public employees, including public school teachers, police, and firefighters, and whereas the bill would specifically prohibit public employees from collectively bargaining their retirement and health care benefits, limit the amount public employees can pay toward those benefits, and eliminate salary step increases, and where Senate Bill 5 would undermine the city's relationship with its dedicated, hard-working public employees and burden them economically, now therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Cincinnati, State of Ohio, Section 1, the Council hereby expresses its opposition to Senate Bill 5 as proposed on February 28, 2011, which would limit the collective bargaining rights of public employees in Ohio, and Part 2, that a copy of this resolution be spread upon the minutes of council, and that copies be sent to Senate President Thomas A. D. Howe, Governor John Kasich, Senator Eric Kearney, and all other members of the Ohio Senate. Yes. If <laughs> we will introduce this resolution to City Council. I am very hopeful that the council will adopt this and that will solidify, as well as demonstrate, that Cincinnati City Council supports your right to collectively bargain for your wages and your benefits. Thank you. All right, I just said, uh, and before we start taking questions, I'd like to thank the other elected officials who have shown up. We have the Vice Mayor of Wyoming, Jim O'Reilly's here. We have uh, former Commissioner David Pepper is here. Tim Burke, Chair of the Democratic Party is here. We have Joe Zimmer from the uh, Construction Trades Council. And then we've got the president of the uh, AAUP. If I miss anybody, please let me know. Just we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we are recognized. So, Doug, where is he? Doug Sizemore from the AFL staff. Okay. No other electeds here. Okay. Very good. All right. So uh, we'll start taking some questions or statements. And I think there's someone right in the front. Let's have our hands up first. Can you, can you uh, elaborate on who is exactly responsible for uh, pushing Senate Bill 5? Senate Bill 5 sponsor is uh, Senator Shannon Jones. She represents the eastern third of Hamlin County and all of Warren County. Uh, also, uh, I would say that uh, the governor, Governor Kasich, also supports the bill and is behind it because uh, he's, he's been uh, quite, quite supportive. So those are the two people that I would say are the, the main people responsible. Do you know what the reasoning behind you know, I don't want to speak for them, and I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what why they why they're uh, proponents of it. Uh, I'll just suffice it to say that I, I think the bill is insufficient, and, and, and I'm not voting for it. But um, they, they should they should speak for themselves, or perhaps there's somebody here from their office who could speak for them. But I, I definitely don't want to speak for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're we're going to take turns in terms of answering questions, young people. So you guys are going to get out of this. Okay, go, go ahead. Come on. Let's, because uh, we don't have much time, so we want to make sure everybody gets a chance. I'll talk fast. I'm yes, Mr. Tim O'Reilly. I've taught here 31 years. I wrote the textbook and uh, have seven articles and was one of the keynote speakers 
at the 25th anniversary of CERN. And you were my really teacher on the issue in depth. I was very pleased that the Republicans called me to ask me, gee, what's wrong with the bill? What can we do as a compromise? Out of the blue. And I was very impressed that they wanted to know that. What I told them is the alternative does not work. The alternative of not having collective bargaining, of having individual grievances, having the potential for strikes, having a lot of conflict does not work. It's much better for us to have an alternative in which we keep the current law, maybe modify a few sub-aspects of it, but don't trash the rights of the public workers. That's a critical factor that I think the Republicans are overreaching or overstepping. We have to fight as Wisconsin has fought, as other states have fought, because if we don't, the long-term private sector consequences, and I can say that as a labor law professor, the long-term private consequences are so significant. So I'm here in support of your efforts to fight Senate Bill 5, take the message back to them, as I've taken it individually when they call me, to say this is not a functional bill that should not be proceeded. Thank you. So we're, we're not going to uh, interrupt people. 
Uh, a couple of things. One is, uh, first of all, people don't, if they don't like their working conditions, they don't just up and leave. That's not how things work. People do negotiate and go to their, their boss or their employer and say, hey, listen, can we change something here or can we modify something here? The second point in response would be that uh, the way that it is done in our public education system in Ohio is that the school board negotiates with the, uh, the teachers union for a whole host of different things. Hours, kids, salary, benefits, all of those things, and that's the way that it is. Now, if you, as a uh, voter in a particular school board, school district, don't like the way the school board is acting, or don't want to see teachers get those benefits, then vote the school board members off. That's part of a democratic process. Okay. What side are we on? We're on the left side. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I have a question. Uh, FDR, uh, he strictly enforced not letting union government workers have unions because of the principle that government by its very nature is a monopoly. And this is one of the battles that Ronald Reagan fought when he ended up firing the air traffic controllers over the fact that uh, government, union, government workers having unions. Uh, the problem is it doesn't work. Uh, this needs to be a wake-up call. We don't have enough money. The government is spending too much money. And Ronald Reagan faced a, a much more serious problem with the economy than in Obama did, what we're facing now. And the reality is, is by following principles of liberty and upholding our con intent and purpose of our Constitution to limit government, we were formed as a republic but since we are not following a constitution, we've devolved into a democracy. Democracies always fail because it's divisive. It's one group against another. Uh, so we need to uphold constitutional law, know our true history and principle, and follow those, have discussions on those. Instead of with a democracy, it devolves into mob rule and it Backer. always fails. So we need to understand our true history and, but on the other hand, I do agree with giving police and firefighters uh, preference because they are the proper role of government. People created government originally uh, to protect their property and to protect their lives. So if you're going to make cuts, they need to be the last ones to be cut. Uh, so we need to protect them because they protect us. Yes, somebody asked, uh, what are we going to have to do to defeat this bill? We're in a, in a, what's really a war to destroy the American labor movement. The private sector, yeah. the private sector is down to less than 8 percent. Today, there are more public employees in unions than there are private sector employees in unions. And that's why the far right, backed by the big corporations with billions of dollars, are financing this attack on the unions. This is a war. And in the war, there are always big battles. The big battle right now is with Wisconsin. So I just want to say, we're with Wisconsin. Wisconsin is holding this thing. Yeah. And Wisconsin is at the point where they are going to have to, and what we're going to see in Wisconsin, they're going to try to dislodge them. This is going to become a question of civil disobedience, of direct action. There's a call by the South Central Federation of Labor, which represents Southern Wisconsin, for a general strike. This is the kind of economic and political action it's going to take. It's going to take enormous power to stop these people. It is great to see this town hall meeting. I'm glad to see elected representatives call it. But we are going to have to make sure that people are on the street, that as the, the, what is it, the Ohio Education Association today had a great demonstration in Norwood. We need more of those demonstrations. We need more visibility of the power of working class people. We have to take this country back for the working class people, and, uh, and we want more democracy. I like this, this statement I saw in Wisconsin. Somebody had a big sign that said, walk like an Egyptian. The Egyptians yeah. are going to struggle against the dictators for democracy. We're not going to let any dictator stop, any dictator Kasich dictate to us. We're going to fight for democracy and for the power of working people in this country to have a decent life. Thanks for having the meeting. Okay. Thank you have my two I'm Dan Lebron. Some of you all are the candidate for the Senate here.
Okay, uh, people, I'd, I'd like to remind folks, what I'd like to see happen is that when people spot, speak, get their question or statement out, there's no prohibition against statements or anything like that, but let's have them make their statement and then, we, you, then you can applaud or boo or do whatever you want, but I want people to be able to say what they have to say clearly, okay? Now, I believe we're on the left side. Go. Yes, it's good. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm John McVeigh. I'm president of the AUP here at the University of Cincinnati. I want to welcome everyone for coming tonight, especially our elected representatives. Um, we're very concerned about this at UC. We think it damages our ability to maintain this great university. Uh, the, U the AUP has been founded on principles of uh, academic freedom and shared governance, and we think these are under attack by this legislation. Uh, these are important things to maintain the quality of a university and we're determined to hang on to these things. We've, we're the oldest and largest chapter in the uh, state of Ohio, and we're gonna lead the way in defending these things. Thank you. First, thanks for having this meeting. My name is Suhit Vikrama, and I'm a public employee. I'm a child welfare worker for Hamilton County. I want to defeat this bill. When I heard what Senator Cerny and Representative Brehel said, in the normal parliamentary procedure, it's not going to be possible to defeat it. So what I want me, my co-workers, and some of my friends are willing to do civil disobedience. What I want to know is that the Hamilton County Democratic Party would facilitate it. The things that I'm asking is, would you help us with a lawyer to tell what kind of things we can do and how to organize it? Now call another community meeting for people who are interested in giving civil disobedience. So would the Hamilton County Democratic Party be willing to help to facilitate that? So we're going to devolve into mob rule. Yes! I appreciate the comment. There is a contact here from the Hamilton County Democratic Party. If you want to pursue the conversation offline, Tim Burke is here. Uh, and so I would encourage you to do that, but we'll, we'll do that afterwards. Thank you. We're going to move over here to that side. Hi, my name is Dan Drake. I'm one of the students here at the University of Cincinnati. I'm standing now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to first of all thank all of our representatives for being here today. And I also want to thank the students for showing up in support of this, even though not all of us are going to be Because we want to stand up for our professors' rights. Now, we've heard a lot of people talking about um, teachers and how it would actually hurt them somehow. But I, I don't know if uh, how many people here use Facebook, but there's this fun little note going around that shows you how much public school teachers get paid by the hour and oh, yeah. how it relates you know, in a real world job. And it says that if we paid $3 an hour for 10 months of seven hours a day, every five, five days, they would earn $118,000 a year. If you can name one public teacher that earns that much money, I would love to personally meet them and ask how they got that. Our teachers are not overpaid. Anybody who says that our teachers are overpaid and that they do not do enough work is wrong. And I also want to make a correction that one of the other speakers said. Ronald Reagan was staunchly in support of unions. Um, when other countries were having problems with their unions, he went out in support of the people for the unions because he recognized that those rights are human rights. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, thank you all for showing up. Yeah, my name is Don Kaiser. I'm with Anthony Local 2524. I sit around here, I went through this in the 80s with Steelworkers. And uh, they took the top out of the tree with the steel workers and the auto workers. And these little towns just dried up and blew away. And there was kids going hungry, parents going hungry, grandparents going hungry. And you know what? Trickle down economics never trickle down. Mm -hmm. Now you can sit here today and let them say, we're going to make amendments and we're going to, we're going to take this side out because we believe you protect us and we're going to pay you off by giving you this exemption. If you let them take us apart, there's going to come a day when we're not going to be together anymore. Now, the first couple of days, it's going to get worse and worse and worse before it ever gets any better. Not to say a doomsday clock's ticking, but I'll tell you what. You can go find steel workers that was making not $85 an hour like they put in the papers, but $10 an hour back then and wishing they had a decent job today. And when they get done with the public workers, then they're going to redo your federal labor laws for everybody. And they're going to make you competitive to overseas labor markets. 
Now, if you want to work for two dollars an hour and make it a tank for somebody, have at it. My name is She's Matt Alter. I'm vice president of the Cincinnati Firefighters Union, Local okay. 48. I represent over 800 firefighters here in the city of Cincinnati. Thank you, Senator Kearney, uh, Representative Pillich, and Dre House, and Councilmember Young. We appreciate you standing up for the firefighters here in Cincinnati and for all labor. Um, we've heard a couple people speak up before us about the safety forces separating us out, and although we appreciate that, um, rest assured that the IFF and Cincinnati firefighters stand behind labor, not just for police and fire, but for all labor. <laughs> Said, um, and this may be directed more towards Senator Kearney, okay. you may be here in the scuttlebutt, and um, maybe even Representative Driehaus and, or Pillage. Um, and I guess I would use the analogy of since we're in the economic crisis that we're in, of home foreclosure, um, binding arbitration for police and firefighters or the right to strike for striking units is similar to eviction um, come, at the, come at the time of foreclosure. So uh, you take that away from employees. So you take away eviction from a, a home being foreclosed on. So if you knew that your home was going to be foreclosed on, but at the end of it, you weren't going to be evicted, you were still allowed to stay in your house, you would never pay your mortgage because you knew there was no penalty for it. So I provide that striking or that binding arbitration is the same thing, that have, taking those abilities away from collective bargaining units, what, what is going to be the drive for or the whatever unit that in the city or administration to sit down with these collective bargaining units and um, sit down and negotiate a fair contract with them. Um, and this is, a, this is more than just wages. Uh, Cincinnati Firefighters, our contract covers safety. I wrote, I'd actually um, challenge you that two thirds of our contract is over safety for the citizens. So our contract covers the citizens more than it covers me personally. So I don't know, uh, Senator Kane, if you've heard anything, what, what's being offered, you know, what's gonna be the result? Well, uh, a couple of things. Thank you very much for your question and your, and your service. Um, let me just review one quick point. The, the, under the way the bill is currently written, the public employees that do not have the right to strike are members of police or fire department, members of the state highway patrol, deputy sheriffs, dispatchers for police, fire, and sheriffs, uh, nurses units, employees of state schools for the deaf or state schools for the blind, employees of public employee retirement systems, correction officers, guards at penal or mental, mental institutions, special police officers for the Department of Development or de oh boy. Development, Depart and de Development and Disabled. Disabled. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm trying to be high tech here. You tell me. Uh, youth leaders employed at juvenile correctional facilities, psychiatric attendants employed at a mental health facility, and members of law enforcement security forces established by a board of county commissioners whose members are employed by that board. So those are the folks who would not be able to strike, okay? And they're, they're also the bill would eliminate the duty to bargain in uh, good faith. 